in the summer of 18, 1989, I received this letter from Swamiji, and he was uh, uh, very excited to talk to me to, uh, or to write about the Agora Mantra and how important he thought that to be. And he wanted to explain that clearly. And so, and so he wore, wrote a series of letters. And so we're going to start with the first letter he wrote and go from there. Who's going to read that? And was this, George is going to be, is this after he um, had that realization of Parabhairava? Swamiji, for about, for about a month, Swamiji was in this completely other state where he actually had uh, the darshan of Swatanda Bhairava had come from whatever world and from everywhere and, and appeared to Swamiji and obviously emphasized the value of this mantra, which we do every, every time. And uh, the first, this was the first letter and first kind of communication Swamiji did when he came out of that state. So it's the 13th of June, 1989, and he said, my dearest Sri Chandrasekhara, which is what he called John. I was in receipt of your loving and devoted letter of the 3rd of April, 1989, and I noted the contents therein, but many ups and downs took place. I was 100% unable to write as I was almost dead. <laughs> Remember, this was when the astrologers had told Swamiji that he might pass away. So he, he thought that would happen because he believed, he believed those uh, astrologers, he said. Now I feel slightly better to write to you, word by word, the meaning of the Agora Mantra. And this is the Agorebio Tagorebio Gora Gora Taribyascha Sarvata Sharva Sarvebio Namaste Rudra Rupebya. Before writing its meaning, I have to note down to you that this mantra is connected with the three great energies, Agora Shaktis, Gora Shaktis, and Goratari Shaktis, which are named respectively Para, Para Para, and Apara Shaktis. It says, these three classes of Shaktis <clears throat> are owned by Agoranatha, viz. Swachandanatha. At the same time, you should note that these three energies are Ananta, they're numberless. Where darkness or ignorance is altogether vanished, they are named Agora energies. And the functioning of these energies is, when these Agora energies penetrate an individual, no matter if that individual is a yogi or an ordinary worldly person, at that very moment of even the slightest touch of Agora energies, that person is born a new being there and then, he becomes one with God consciousness and is no less than Swachandanatha. This is called Tivra Shaktipata, Supreme Most Grace. You should publish it, meaning Swamiji meant this mantra, you should publish it and spread this message all over the world. So this is, this is about the Agora mantra, but specifically about Swachandanatha, who is the Lord of these, these energies and this is just a, an extract from Swamiji's first book, Secret Supreme. And he says, in the beginning of Satyuga, Lord Shiva appeared in the form of Swachandanatha. And as Swachandanatha, he appeared with five heads and 18 arms. His five heads came into manifestation through his five great energies. That's Chit Shakti, all consciousness, Ananda Shakti, all bliss, Icha Shakti, all will, Jnana Shakti, all knowledge and Kriya Shakti, the all action. And these five energies appeared in his five mouths, which are known as Ishana, Tatpurusha, Sedyojata, Vamadeva, and Agora. And these five energies got the sensation of illuminating the universe, Anugraha. And this grace came out through Lord Shiva's five acts of creation, protection, destruction, concealing, and revealing for the purpose of illuminating the whole universe. And if we could just see this picture, this is a picture that Swamiji had painted and that he hung in the lecture hall. And this is symbolic, the five faces and the 18 arms and all the weapons that the, he has in his arms are all symbolic of different aspects of Swachanda Bhairava. But this will give a little, little bit of an introduction to why um, Swachandanatha or Swachanda Bhairava is important in Kashmir Shaivism and the three Shaktis are his immediate um, 
you know, energies, as Swamiji just said in that letter that he wrote to John. And Swamiji had darshan of Swachandanatha, which is very unusual because according to Kashmir Shaiva philosophy, Swachandanatha only appears in Satyuga and chronologically we're presently in, in Kali Yuga. And when Lord Shiva appears in Kali Yuga, he appears just with four arms. It's still the same manifestation of, of Parama Shiva, but he appears with four arms and just one, one head or one face and has a trishula and he still has those, uh, those different weapons. Um, so, uh, do you want to discuss or just uh, have anything to say about that, John? I think the thing that I've come to realize about these Agora energies, actually, these are all the energies that exist. And, uh, and uh, we just, they're, they're classified into three kinds of energies. Uh, those energies that lift one up, the energies that keep one fixed, and the energies that push one down. These are all the energies that make up this world. And, and so it's the Agora energies, as, as far as you mentioned, that, that are those energies that when they touch you, you're just transformed immediately. In the, and and I'm, I'm sure that all of you have experienced it sometime in your life, having a touch of something special in your life has just changed immediately. And so it's like that. And so these, these energies are very important. And this, this mantra is very powerful. I mean, in terms of mantras, and, you know, otherwise why would we, we're not saying that just for, just the, for the word meaning, you know, the actual sound and the vibration of this mantra has a special effect. That's, uh, in the, so that's, that's why we sing it every time for, before, the, uh, before we start our lectures. And it's, uh, it's an important thing. You could sing it every morning for yourself, every morning before you, before you start your day. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful practice. Sarvata 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 Sarvata